STH Colleen for Solar City Solutions with Envisage Mercy, the Environmental Sustainability and Justice Club. We are looking at a disassembly of the Fushin mold system, and we're looking here at the neck of the digester with the gas holder inside, represented by this uh, baby bottle top. This metal can here is this metal can here, the mold around which you pour the cement for the neck of the digester, and then the gas holder goes inside there and it collects the gas and the water displaces. So the way that it works in real life, if I put this down is, as you can see, the gas holder is submerged underwater and the cement that would be poured around these molds would form that neck. So the cement would be poured outside these molds here, forming this neck here. And the gas holder made of fiberglass is anchored, and you can see how it's anchored. Removing the top set of molds, you see this pin here. This pin is long enough that it goes through the hole that will be left in the cement. When you actually make the mold, you pour the cement over this and it leaves a hole. This can fit through, and then that anchors anchors the holder on three sides, one here, and you can point that one out down there. There's another one down there, as you can see. That anchors it, and then over on that side, it's a shame if you'll open that up so that people can see. You can see the other pin, and by being a triangle, it goes in, that holds it down because the triangle is so strong and there is a triangle brace on the bottom of this gas holder, which you can see if we move those out a second. If I lift this up, you can see the triangle here, which is what is anchored to this bolt, to this metal plate, at the exact position of this part wow. here. So all the stresses go onto the triangle, meaning there's very little pressure actually on the fiberglass. And that's why it can stand a ton of pressure when the water is above it and the gas is inside. The gas wants to jump up like a rocket. The water's pushing it down, but it's anchored by this triangular piece here. So all the stresses are borne by the metal triangle. So when we put it back down, cement like that, and I'll put these back up. Note that the holes are on the bottom here. There's the holes and the top. And that's how you join these plates together, but you always do it over a gap. You never put a plate over a plate like this. That would be unstable. You see? So you always put a plate over two other plates. Oh, that and that joins them together. It leads to stability when this plate curvature hovers over that. Like bricks. Like bricks, exactly like laying bricks. And then go ahead and put those up there. Then the way that this operates, imagining that this is cement now, we put those up. And if this is anchored in here, with this anchored, this is going to start out with water. You pour the water, you fill this entire tank with water up to here, which is where Nick's fingers are. You, you fill it with water, and then you keep pouring the water until the water gets above this fiberglass, but only just so, up to the level of here. So that's how deep you put the water in, from here plus this piece here. Now it's submerged. What that means is that the air that's inside, when you fill it, is going to be forced out of here, and so the whole thing is going to be filled with water. When the bacteria inside here start bubbling up, farting as it, as it were, and they start building, all that gas is going to run up these sides, collect inside that fiberglass, and then the water has to go somewhere, and this is going to be closed. So where's the water going to go? It spills out the sides as the gas builds up, and begins to push up and rise and rise and rise until it gets up to here. 
and that's the maximum depth. So it's engineered so that as soon as this is filled with gas, the water has reached its maximum level here. It's not going to spill over. That water then is under gravity, a ton of pressure, trying to push the gas out. The gas doesn't want to go anywhere. It's pushing up on this, but it's anchored. The fiberglass is anchored, so this can't go anywhere. So when you release the valve, the water pushes down the gas, goes, and it's really strong. That's the hydraulic uh, pressure system they, they got their patent for. Yeah, you this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would just be a tank. And there's nothing so special just about a tank. This is what makes it so unique, the way that this is engineered for the gas holes. And you rarely get to see how it sits in. Uh, obviously, with the model, it makes a little bit, a little bit more sense to imagine. But there it is with the anchors. And the only other piece to look at is here. The gas holder here, twist this. The gas is going to be coming out a flexible tube, and the gas has to come out here. So when you're pouring the cement, put this in so that it gives a, leaves a hole for the cement to go around so there's a hole for the tube to come out. Mm -hmm. And that way the gas stays submerged underwater. And when we build this in Brazil and we build playgrounds for kids and we seal it with cement on the top using that mold there, see this? This is one of several pieces that go over here. And you build them up. There's another section over there that's made into a curve. And you build up cement tops that you can then seal. But notice that the gas is underneath so kids can play on top of this. And the whole thing can be just com completely under, underground because this piece is something open. There are little things, there are trivial things, but if you lose this piece, like I said, if you lose the pin that helps you to line these holes, then you're going to have a hard time building. But it's a really nicely engineered system. Normally it takes months and months of training for people to do build biodigesters, and it takes 30 days to build a biodigester. This, you can be trained in a day or two, like we're doing here. You can build in five days and then keep building. So it means that we could technically build these all over the world within five years. Almost everybody could have a biodigester if we have enough people trained. And the molds can be used over and over and over, just pouring cement. I hope that's a bit clearer. Now you see how I'm going to just imagine this whole thing lifted on top of that. If this was a balloon, you think of, of, of the gas might pop it? No. There are people who do uh, PVC rather than fiberglass. The problem is anchoring the PVC so that in time it doesn't tear with all the pressure because it would want to rise. And we have had situations in Israel where it's been badly anchored and this thing came out like that and the whole thing went because it's got all that gas in it. It wants to rise up. So you have to make sure when you pour, when you're doing that in Brazil, that you take this anchor and when you're pouring this in, you make sure that this is shoved all the way in, not like that. Because if it's only halfway in, you won't have a deep enough hole on the other side. So what we do is we surround these with plastic and we wedge them in really hard. And then we pour our cement. You see how the cement, you can see it on, on, the, on this side here. You want to make sure that it's all the way out and that it's straight, not leaning down like this. So that's why we wedge it with uh, plastic so it stays perfectly straight. And that way, when we take it out, and we actually put the pin, this pin here, it's not on an angle. It's got to be straight, otherwise it could pop out. There's just little engineering things about how you get this in. I'm sure your dad could talk all about that. These little tiny things that if they're off, the system doesn't work well. But it's pretty much a turnkey system. As you can see, there's nothing much to it. And that's the innovation here. Just getting that aware, and then boom, you build it. And note that that center, that piece that you moved out, every one of the molds has a piece, a gap piece, like this, which is the last piece in and the first piece out. And it's um, made. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but you see how it's, it's angled as a wedge so that at the end, you can come in and make sure everything fits right 
you can come in here and because it's wedged, you put it in and it can go back and back and back and it fits in. And then when you need to get it out, like we did over there, you just go and it comes out. That's another part of the innovation. No cement goes inside. No cement goes inside. The cement goes in between this smooth surface and a surface on the outside. It's also smooth. How do you get it out? You, these, the outer plates, you just have to the inner plates you have to get inside. This will not be there when you're doing that. This is the last piece to go in. So you climb inside with a ladder and you pull them out. I mean, like the cement, the cement doesn't leave the part that just stays apart? It does. You oil them. That's a very good question. All of these, Leo, poor Leo, hmm. in the hot sun, standing with me, dipping a brush into used motor oil, going like this, <laughs> painting every possible joint. And then you would drop it in the mud. You'd have to clean the mud off it and repaint it. And you were all flopping and smelling bad. Was that the Iron Week? No, that was in Brazil a couple weeks ago. But yeah, you've got oil. You don't have the plates you're in there to get out. Imagine what we're going to go down in Brazil this next time. I say it's a tough trip because we're going down. It'll be a hot day. We're going to be inside like you are. In the hot sun, it starts to boil in there. And we're going to be taking out. And you can imagine it's going to be surrounded by cement, the whole thing. So it, it looks like, where's my piece go? It looks like that, but you're inside the metal inside and you're trying to pull the metal out from the cement that's up here. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that makes sense.